Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is uh, a tutorial for this simple animation of uh, sci-fi digital brick. Uh, it was essentially inspired by the thumbnail from a Houdini tutorial, but I haven't really looked into that. I'm not sure if I'm using the same method or not. Anyway, my method will have some limitation, but this is also a very old technique, which I think will be applicable here. So let's start. So here we in Blender. As always, we're going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. In this tutorial, we're going to start with a cube instead of any specific geometry. So let's uh, increase the amount of vertices to increase the subdivision. So this is the idea. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to visualize the Voronoi. So let's take a look with the cube. Uh, it's, it might not be very obvious about how Voronoi is essentially function, but if you go to color, then and or you go to position, then you can actually realize that basically a Voronoi pattern is you distribute a center points here or there, and then uh, mark the closest uh, points around it. So now you can actually see uh, this group is closest to this point and that group is also closest to that point. So this is the idea of Voronoi. Okay. And uh, what we're trying to do eventually is just uh, to uh, let all these kind of vertex know that uh, they belong to this point. So in, in addition to the position, uh, we are going to give them more information. So here it comes to a preset, which is called the attributes or noise. Uh, you don't need to worry about that because we are going to discuss the principle of it. Uh, I just want you to understand that I want to get the index, position, and the normal uh, from this kind of Voronoi pattern. Basically, uh, every color is a block. I want all these kind of vertices inside to have a shared index and a shared position, shared normal. Okay, so this is the idea. And the uh, Voronoi texture automatically already give you the position. As you can see, this is the kind of position for all these kind of vertices to actually compare them with. Okay, but how can I actually get the index and uh, get the normal? The idea is pretty simple. So. Uh, you can sample nearest and the sample with a single position from this Voronoi texture and then you get an index. It will not be very easy to visualize because all index is larger than one and in terms of color it's more than white. So everything shows to be white. So how can we uh, know that if we're getting anything right? So you just take a kind of random color, maybe a random vector, and plug this index into ID, then you get a different color. So this is the same as how we actually get a color from the Voronoi texture. So we know that we're doing things right, okay? So uh, we know the shared index now. How can we actually get the normal? Uh, we can sample index. So the same geometry, and now we plug this shared index into place, and we are getting a center normal within this shared index. So now this is what we get. Uh, it looks kind of very weird. It doesn't really specify the block. This is again due to the issue uh, how 3D vector is not properly being shown in terms of color because they go to negative range, so everything shows to be dark. But uh, it works, okay? So this, this idea works. Uh, it will give uh, basically the same result if you use these attributes for annoy. okay? But this is just the one method to get the Voronoi texture. Previously, we've already discussed the principle of this uh, Voronoi system. Basically, you distribute the point somewhere uh, along this mesh or in 3D space, and then you measure the distance. Okay. So from zero distance, which is black, and to, uh, to uh, 
a full distance, which is one. So that's why you have all this kind of a cell pattern, uh, which also means that you can construct a Voronoi system by hand. So let's take a distribute uh, points on face. Okay. So we have all these kind of points, uh, which is distributed on face. We can visualize that with the joint geometry. Okay. So this is how it looks like. And then we are trying to measure the distance of uh, the vertices uh, to all these kind of points. What we can do uh, is a geometry proximity, which give not only position, but also distance. Okay. So now if I look at this mesh and look at the distance, uh, we need to compare with the face. So now we have all this kind of a cell pattern, which is not 100% the same as the Voronoi texture because it looks to be darker for some reason. But you get this pattern. We can, uh, of course, normalize the, this distance so that uh, this area looks to be white or whiter or whatever. Okay. But this is the idea. You construct uh, a Voronoi system by hand. And uh, now we again have this position. Okay. And then we just repeat the same process as what we've done earlier with this sample nearest. And finally, we get kind of normal. And we also get an index. Okay. So this is kind of idea or two ways to construct a Voronoi system. There are pros and cons. One, you can, can control the number. The other, you cannot control the number. Uh, and the one costs the more nodes. The other is just uh, a given texture and so on and so forth. So once we know the principle of this Voronoi setup, we can just use a preset to simplify this workflow so that we do not need to keep sampling and uh, transferring attributes and so on. Okay. So the two methods are basically two modes within this attribute of Voronoi. One is to use points, the other is to use the Voronoi texture. So you can use either of these two methods and uh, let's start with points. And knowing that uh, there is a split edge inside these attributes were noise, which means all these kind of polygons can be separated to each other. So let's take a set position. Right now, there's nothing. But if we plug this normal into offset, you will also realize there's still nothing. Okay, this is because we need uh, a point normal for guidance. And once you put that in, immediately you can see there is a kind of push apart. Uh, every part is being pushed to their respective normal. But uh, uh, we have actually more points. Only because all these kind of points are actually facing the same normal, so we do not have uh, as many separation as expected. But what you can do is instead of using normal to push away, we can also take a random value random value and let's use a vector so take that into the offsets so negative one to positive one then you can see this is effect of pushing apart for different block or islands let's take a scale vector mass scale and now we can actually break apart this geometry so this is the idea. Of course, this principle also works for for noise texture. The only difference is one you can control the density, or the other you can use the scale to tell the detail amount. Okay. Knowing that there is also a preset which is called a point distribute, uh, which instead of using the density. I can really specify the amount because by using density, I do not really know how many points I actually distribute every time. With density of 10, it doesn't necessarily mean that I have 10 points. I actually have more than that. But with point distribute, I can mostly specify that I only have about 10 points or 15 points or whatever. Okay. So these are just the different uh, uh, details. But the principle always stays the same. And uh, since this uh, entire setup is completely procedural, so let's just go back to the points mode. 
and I'm going to take a Susan head. So in the original geometry, I'm going to use the Susan monkey, and uh, let's use the group inputs to replace the cube we have initially. So initially, everything is actually a Susan monkey. So we take the scale to zero, and we can add a some subdivision surface. Let's use the point distribute to specify the amount of points. If we, we can specify the amount of points, it actually also specify the amount of pieces or islands that you actually created. So I'm using the normal. Okay. So now this animation is basically breaking yet. But this is a random value. So let's use the normal. So this is how it breaks. Okay. I think this is good enough. And uh, next, we're just going to control uh, how to break that with a fourth. You can do the control fourth. So let's use a directional fourth. So you can see half of them are broken because this is directional fourth is one to zero. And by increasing this scale offset, you can smooth this uh, effect out. So initially and finally breaking. And of, of course, you can add some random value to that based on the index shared to every block. But basically, this is kind of idea. And it's procedurally, it can be used to break anything. But uh, within that uh, sci-fi effect, there is another important principle which is actually enlighten the, all these kind of edges. In Blender, there is no real better way to do this for the moment. So I use a kind of a trick, which I'm not sure if it will actually work for Suzanne Monkey or not, but we are going to try. The basic idea uh, is pretty straightforward. There is a dual mesh node and uh, it can keep boundary and there is also another form which you do not keep a boundary so by comparing these two geometry status you can actually isolate uh, the boundary geometry so this is how you do the boundary detection this is a kind of a hacking method and it doesn't always work the reason it doesn't always work is because the dual mesh calculation requires a specific type of mesh and so on and so forth anyway the idea is boundary selection and uh, it's also not very easy to see yet but uh, looks kind of nice because if you look at this kind of islands somehow it actually shows the pieces very well and uh, once we have this kind of boundary selection, we're just going to separate, separate geometry to separate uh, these points. So now we have all these kind of edges. And uh, let's do a mesh to curve so now we have all these kind of edges and we bevel curve let's take a value position so that we give a small enough number so divide more so finally we get this kind of wireframe structure take a join geometry let's add the original Suzanne to the place. So now we have this kind of structure. Uh, it looks better than I thought. Uh, it's not too awful. Okay. So we have this kind of effect, and finally, you just give a different material. So let's get a Suzanne Monkey A, whatever material. So maybe a dark, dark material. 
and let's add in animation shader so material 001 so now if we look at the material preview then it looks like this uh, it's not a 100% perfect as you can see there are some parts which is whatever whatever but it looks nice and by manipulating the initial fourth you can see this breaks okay. actually this looks kind of cool it looks cool somehow <laughs> yes and uh, what if I do not want this kind of curve to show before they break it's very simple to do you basically just uh, either delete these curve points so we have this mesh to curve you either delete these curve points so you have deleted geometry or you can use the set the curve radius there are pros and cons in both methods uh, we can try both of them so we take a delete geometry so immediately we lose everything because the selection is on but uh, let's set a selection if this fourth equals to zero which means there is no separation to occur then I delete everything but if you play this animation you can see then you have this effect right uh, but you also realize uh, if you try to delete the kind of points of a curve they are still connected only the points are not being shown that's why you have this kind of flow of this spline somehow which is kind of very subtle sometimes you may want to have this effect because I think it looks kind of interesting but other times if you do not want then you can use this set curve radius which instead of deleting points it's just uh, not uh, shown that so we can put that into the radius so you can see it just becomes thinner as this fourth goes and of course you can just uh, add a kind of a float curve uh, to manipulate maybe it becomes a sharper or whatever so these are just the uh, parameter things you can deal with in your free time but the principle is very straightforward so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i'll probably see you next time bye bye